I promised you I would get back to you on this uh, evap repair that I got going here in the truck. And I guess I, now's as good a time as any to do it. Uh, it's not good news. What can I say? <laughs> but uh, I'll give you the rundown. In case you didn't catch it in the beginning off of part one, I'll uh, review it quickly. Okay, this is the truck. You all know it. Well, some of you do. If you missed the first video, maybe you don't. But this is a 08 Ram. Good truck, a lot of power. Big horn series, 4x4. And all the good stuff that you expect a Ram to have in it. The Hemi. You know, it plows snow in the winter. Pulls all kinds of stuff and hauls all kinds of stuff in the summer. But right now, it has a check engine light on. Still. So, a quick rundown to anybody that missed the first video. <clears throat> I had a gas cap light that came on the, on the dash. It warned me that the gas cap was uh, leaking. Small leak. <clears throat> so, first thing I did, I replaced the gas cap. This is the old one because the new one made no difference at all. It just ended up being a uh, check engine light. Cell light came on. and went from a gas cap warning to a cell light. So I figured, okay, now it's time to fix it. i got to do something about it. And uh, crawled underneath it. Well, first, I replaced the gas cap, as I just said. Uh, that didn't work. So I crawled underneath it, figuring, uh, all right, let me pull the canister out of it, the charcoal canister, and blow some air through it. And if it had some gas in it or something, I could clear it up, dry it out, and throw it back up there. So in the process of doing that, though, I went to pull a hose off of uh, a check valve that's attached to the canister. And the check valve broke because it's plastic and it's been on there for 10 years or so. So anyways... What I did then was had to go replace that, which I don't, I don't remember what that was, 60 bucks or something. Uh, I don't even remember where I got it from. Threw that back on there and tried it out. It seemed to work for a little while. Uh, but then eventually the cell light came on again for a low leak. So I took it to the shop. This time I figured, okay, I don't want to keep playing with it. Took it to my mechanic. He said he put it on a smoke test and said the only thing wrong with it was um, it had a... Uh, fuel tank pressure sensor that was bad so he replaced that and uh, he said I'm good to go so I go down the street 50 miles later cell light comes on again small leak and uh, back to square one so I'm thinking the next likely thing in line would be the purge valve so I went and found the purge valve which wasn't easy to do I had to end up going to a dealer for that that was like 60 bucks 63 bucks or something through the purge valve on that purge valve is is uh, in the engine compartment as you'll know if you work on this system sometimes it's it's throughout the entire vehicle it's not in one single spot it's located everywhere in it and uh, the purge valve was there so I replaced that thinking for sure that would be it and uh, it, it wasn't I drove another 50 miles OBD did its diagnostics and uh, it, it, the cell light popped on again so now that's the point I'm at, basically. Uh, if I get in the truck right now, I mean, I can I can cancel the cell light all day long with my code reader, but uh, it's not going to do any good. And uh, fortunately for me, and some of you might disagree with me being okay with this, I did get a sticker uh, in between all this stuff happening. When my mechanic said he fixed the truck, I told him to throw a sticker on it too because it was due. So we threw a sticker on it and then the next day, 50 miles, like I said, down the road, Salt Lake came back on. But now I got a sticker on it, so I'm good to drive it for a year and uh, it's not going to hurt anything. At least not anything. Some of you might argue that, yeah, it's going to hurt some things. If not in the vehicle itself, maybe in the atmosphere, up there someplace. And I wouldn't argue with that, but uh, the thing is, I live in the real world where I gotta I gotta go with the flow, you know. I just I just have to roll that way all the time. So, 
So anyways, that's where I stand with this. And I was hoping to come back and tell you that, yeah, it's fixed. I fixed it, you know. It must have been the purge valve. It's fixed. It's fixed. But uh, I, can't, I can't do that. I can't tell you that it was the purge valve. I can't tell you that it's fixed. So what I'm going to do is drive it when I need to, which is not that often in the summer. Uh, and uh, I'm going to dig in it dig into it some more and try to find out where this little leak is I'm, I'm probably going to be underneath the hood now checking some kind of vent uh, 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 PVC or something like that see if it's dirty and clogged up and needs to be replaced I don't know but I'm going to be looking for a little um, leak someplace and when I find it I'll give that a shot I'll try to fix it and after I do that I'll wait a while and see if it is fixed if it's fixed you'll be getting another video a quick little video saying that it's fixed like like i was hoping this one was going to be but it ain't uh and if, and if i don't get it fixed eventually i'll probably give you a little video telling you that too either way in case you're following following along you know um but i'm i'd, I'd be more than happy to listen to any comments or address any questions that i'm able to and um, completely agreeable to getting any advice you may have for me because I'm not a mechanic uh, some people think I am I'm not I'm just a regular guy like everybody else and how to push the buttons on uh, YouTube to find a video to help me along and then when I can I make a video to help other people along so this is another long one of my dragged out videos so I'm gonna stop it right here and uh, hopefully I'll see you again and uh, maybe you'll have something, some advice you can give to me.